and welcome to Stampin' Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and that's Tom getting a call across the room. We'd like to welcome you all here from around the United States and all around the world. It is great to see you for our one and only Christmas and July video. Now, I saw a few people in there saying, I'm not ready for Christmas, but you know what? There's a heat wave going on, and the only thing I want to think about right now is cooling off and snow and snowflakes and things like that are a great way to do that. So tonight we're going to make a slimline holiday card and I'm going to be using our Master Layouts 10 die set and as promised I'm going to be using the new platform from Spellbinders. This is called, let me see here, let me get the box again. Here's the box. This is called the uh, Universal Plate System by Spellbinders. I finally pulled it out of the box and I've only been playing with cutting wafer thin dies. So I'll show you the sandwich for that because it is a little bit different than the regular Spellbinders plates. There's an additional plate in here and I'm gonna learn more about it. And each time I use it, hopefully I'll be able to give you some more tips and tricks on how to use it. But before we get started, why don't we say hello to Tom? Happy holiday. <laughs> hey, Tom. Happy holiday. <laughs> hey, we have a little, uh, whoops. We have a little sleigh bells here. We do? Yeah, you don't hear them, but. I don't hear anything. Quite festive. I don't hear anything. Oh, no, I didn't get my, so, okay, so somebody said I got my nose pierced. I've had my nose pierced for 10 years, but I um, don't wear it all the time. And I took it out when COVID hit and I was wearing a mask all the time because nobody could see it. And I kind of forgot about it for a while and I haven't put it in, but my nose has been pierced for about 10 years. Rena, when she was 15, something like that, wanted to get a piercing and I went along with her and she said, mom, you should get something done too. So I got my nose pierced, yeah. but uh, you can get the same look with a little connect glue and a Gina K designs embellishment, a disco ball sequin, right? Yikes. Tom? <laughs> yeah, you can. And it opens up a little when you sneeze, right? <laughs> no, it certainly does not. But I was really surprised. I haven't worn it for like months and I popped it right in this morning. No problem. So yeah, it's fun. So um, today we're going to be using the Master Layouts 10 to make a slimline card. I haven't used this particular die set as much as I wanted to because it was a little bit of a struggle with the other plates because you have to kind of turn it to get it to go all the way through because it is a very, very big die. Look how big this die is. That is just huge. So for context, let me pull out the Spellbinders regular plate so you can see it will fit on the plate. It goes end to end. So if you have this particular platform, you definitely can cut these out. So don't worry, you don't need to run out and buy the other one. But to me, it took a little bit of extra taping down just to make sure it didn't shift so I would get everything cut out. That's not a problem, but this new plate system is amazing because look how, look how much bigger it is. So I love that. So this is a really fun uh, system. Now let me show you what you need to do in order to make this work the same way that the other one works. So with the other one, you would use the A plate and then you would use a C plate, put your die and your paper in there, and then you'd put another C plate on top. So of course I don't read directions and I tried to do that. And when I pushed it through, nothing happened. It actually did not put any pressure on the machine at all. So what I realized is with this new system, they have something called a B platform top. And so there must be dies out there that are thicker or maybe even for embossing folders where this one works without this plate. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be playing with that a little bit. Um, it looks like here embossing folder sandwiches use an A, B, um, an embossing folder and a C plate. I didn't even look at this. The 3D embossing folders, you use just the A, the 3D folder, and then the D adapter. I didn't look at this. I just tried it and it didn't work. So then I added the B plate on top and then it worked just great. So if you decide to get this, you get all of the plates in your kit 
So it'll just be an A, a B, and then the two C cutting plates. Super simple. So works with the Spellbinders Platinum Machine and this blue one as well. I have both the white one and the blue one. And so I'm going to cut, I'm going to start by cutting out. No, actually, I think I'm going to stamp first and then cut out second because I want to do some embossing. And when you do embossing, you definitely would want to do the embossing first and then do the cutting second because especially with these kinds of dies with the stitching, it's very hard to get your stamping and your embossing down into the stitched areas. So if you want to know an easy way to make sure that you get all of your snowflakes or whatever you're going to do in this area before you cut, all I do is I just take a pencil, and I've done this before, and I just do a little line there. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit and do an another line down here, one on the side, and one on the side here. So I just want to make sure I stay within that area. Can they see that, Tom? Uh, yes. Okay, good, because uh, it looks really bright on my end. Okay, so I am going to do some embossing. So let me tell you a little bit about what stamp sets I'm going to be using today. I'm going to use these ornamental snowflakes. I love this set. It's a cute little four by six set, and it's got some very delicate snowflakes because I want to do gold snowflakes all over this, but I don't want them to take over the card. OK, so I want it to be very soft and subtle. And these are so delicate. They're perfect. Uh, there's another set of snowflakes that we have called folk art snowflakes that also work very well. But I really like how old fashioned these look. They look literally like old fashioned snow, like ornaments that you would hang on your tree. So I want to use that set. And then for my other set, I decided to use this set. This is called Star Flower. And what I love about this stamp and die combo is you can use this any time of the year. And that's a great stamp set. So in the spring, you can make this into daisies. In the summer, you can make this into just big, bold, bright summer flowers. In the autumn time, this can be a sunflower, all depending on the colors that you use. And in the winter and at Christmas, you can make this into a poinsettia. So that's what we are going to use. Okay, so what's the question there? Somebody's saying, I hope so, that's what I have. And I wondered about the new plate system. What's the difference between the white and colored spellbinder machines? Diane, there's nothing different about them except the color. So if you love that teal turquoise color, um, definitely get the blue one. If you like a clean white color like this, this one here, then go with just the traditional one. So it's the same exact machine. I, I didn't buy the blue one. They actually sent that one to me as a gift. So I started using it, but I always used my other one and it works great. So there is no difference. You don't need a new one. And um, yes, the master layouts, 10 dies, do work with the regular plates, but they're just a little bit easier with the bigger plates because you don't have to be quite so precise because this die and this die are the exact size of the plate. But with the bigger plates, they're not. So you've got a little um, room to roam. All right. So I want to tell you about this Starflower set. We put it in online as the deal of the week. So this is normally about $33 for the stamp set and the die set. And we put it in as the deal of the week, the whole stamp and die bundle you get for uh, $15. So that's a pretty good deal, huh? So if this is a set that you like and you think, yes, I want a flower that I can use for every single season, this might be the one for you. So we threw it into that category and... Uh, Go ahead and get that if you're interested. Now, the other stamp set I might use tonight is this Holly Jolly mini set. I know so many of you have this one already, so I decided to pull it out. 
I think it works really nicely with the Master Layouts 10. And I am going to do something with the rest of the dies from this Master Layouts 10 set as well. Not the not this one here, the greeting one, but these. I like how this Merry Christmas fits in here. I think that that's nice. Uh, I don't like it this way, but I like this one this way. So I think it works really well. So I'm going to use this tonight and these as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to just grab a little piece of cardstock here because I think you can see this brown color, this craft color a little bit better. I'm going to start, it's so big that you can't even, you know, get it all into the screen without zooming out. I'm going to start with some embossing magic and I'm going to rub that all over the surface of this card. Okay. That just removes any static and any um, oil or anything from my skin. Now, for the stamps, I am going to start with this big one up here. So let me get that one out. And I need a block. I'm going to use an acrylic block for this. So I'm going to start stamping a little bit high of the middle which this is about the middle here, because I am going to put something across the center. So I'm going to just start a little high in the middle here. And I'm going to use the Gina K Designs Embossing and Watermark Ink Pad. Yes, mine is very dirty, so pay no mind to that. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. I haven't used these for a while, so... And I'm just going to kind of be a little random. I'm not going to stamp them all straight up and down. All right, I'm going to ink that up. I'm going to do half of this piece of cardstock. And I think I'll do one. I can see it. I know you guys can't see it. I can see it here. I'm going to do one here. And then I'm going to take this embossing powder and I am going to sprinkle that on. I have a little piece of cardstock right here because I don't want these to dry. And I also want to be able to see them so I don't overlap too much. So it helps me to kind of get the embossing powder on there. These are so delicate. There we go. Okay, so I have two of them on there. Now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to stamp a different design. They're very similar, but there's definitely differences in them. Okay, so we'll ink this one up. Okay. What's the matter? There's no Tom Rack book not showing. What does that mean, Tom? I think Facebook. Oh, Facebook? Read. It's not showing the live link? Huh. Um, but it looks like it's connected. Okay. We've had some people watching. So there are people watching on Facebook? Huh, I don't know what's going on. Sorry about that. All right. And then I am going to... Oh. What's going on? Well, they might be watching from the uh, fan Facebook page. Oh, okay. We're trying. Yeah. Well, it's always good to just click through the link because that'll take you to our... Um, our Facebook page, not the group. It's on our Facebook page. So you can always come over to YouTube. All right, I went a little outside there. And then I'm going to... So this is the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Embossing Powder. Okay. Get a little more on there. There we go. Okay, so... Now I'm going to add a third one. I'm going to put my embossing powder back soon. You're feeling the chill already? These are so pretty once they're heated up. This one I did not clean from the last time I used it, so I'm hoping that it gives me good coverage. Let's see. I think it will, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to do another one over here. 
And I'm just working my way down. Aren't they pretty? Welcome everyone. There's lots of people here for a snowflake card tonight. Everybody's hot. I'm really worried about all my friends in the UK. I know that they're uh, and all over Europe and all over California. It's so hot. Okay. All right, so we've got those. I'm gonna put this back in here so we can start over with this. Okay, so let's heat these up first. We'll get these done and out of the way and then we'll finish the bottom part. Welcome everyone. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Everybody should, it looks like a lot of people are coming in from Facebook. I'm seeing a lot of Facebook comments coming through. We can see what platform you're watching from by your comment so i don't know what's going on oh, look at that gold tell the truth when you first saw embossing wasn't that just the gateway drug for you for stamping <laughs> didn't you just think oh my gosh i have to do this it's too pretty it was for me i remember watching a friend of mine, gold emboss a butterfly, and I lost my mind. It was the prettiest thing, the way this embossing powder just turns. And this is the Gina K Designs Fine Detail Gold Embossing Powder. And the Fine Detail Powder, the big difference between Fine Detail Powders and regular powders is you don't lose the detail in your um, artwork, in your stamps, because the powder doesn't swell up the same way that regular embossing powder does. Regular embossing powder will swell up and it loses detail, it gets puffy, where fine detail does not swell up at that same height and you don't lose the detail, so, okay. So we're gonna finish this up, going down the bottom this time. Here, make sure we get good contact. I need this because I'm going to stamp off, and I'm just doing two at a time and then switching out the stamps. And of course, you could have different stamps on different blocks, and you could do a lot more than I'm doing, a lot more switching. And again, it's easier for me to do the powder so I can see where those images are so I don't overlap. So what did I get on that that's creating that monstrosity? To clean that up a little bit. I don't know what that is. I must have touched something and got it on there. Some lotion maybe on my hands? I don't know. Now I wanna go back and add more powder to where I blew this away, but I might have to do this again. I think I blew too much off. That was actually the first snowflake too. So maybe I didn't, uh, maybe that Versamark or that embossing and watermark ink dried on there a little bit. So let's see. Oh, that's not as bad. Okay. So we'll cook these. I'm just going to get rid of this. There we go. I just use a little brush to brush it away. Cook those. The only cooking I do on a Tuesday night around here. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love these snowflakes. Alicia drew these. My daughter, Alicia. All right, let's use this one. I think that one stamp just wasn't clean enough. I can emboss a fingerprint. <laughs> Yes, you can. <laughs> the stamp set that I'm using here is called Ornamental Snowflakes. They're kind of like old fashioned snowflakes. 
Well, that's pretty, Tom. Get me all in the mood for Christmas. I'm not in the mood for winter yet, but I thought it would be fun to do a Christmas card just because we haven't done one in so long. Christmas in July is kind of a thing. <laughs> You've done it a lot too, <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> it is what it is. It's card making. Oh, look, I overlapped. <sighs> Goodness gracious. That's all right. Not a problem. But that really is why I like to do one at a time. I shouldn't be doing one at a time, but it's all right. We can overlap a couple on the top and make that the way we meant it to be. Once it embosses, though, it's so pretty, it doesn't even really matter. I'll overlap like two more somewhere on here. Let's change out this. We'll go with this one. Do one down here. And we'll do just a little bit on this other side. And then I'm going to overlap something at the top so that it looks like it was meant to be overlapped. Yeah, these are my fingerprints. You're right. Plus, you guys know I'm extra staticky now, right? If you if you didn't join my last live, you wouldn't know that that I'm extra staticky than I used to be. But um, I went to the doctor and found out that I have some allergies to dryer sheets, and so. I haven't tried all of your tips and tricks yet for getting rid of static without a dryer sheet. I did have the wool balls, but I only had one, and you guys told me I should use three. You also told me I should use tin foil, a ball of tin foil. Somebody said put um, safety pins all over the wool ball. So I have to try all of those things because I am more staticky than usual now. Oops. <laughs> Let's just redo that. Have to be careful. But not too careful. Because this is the background. I actually feel like a piece of vellum over this would be gorgeous too. But we'll see. Okay. Vinegar instead of fabric softener. I, I Yeah, I have all of your great ideas and I got to work on it. My clothes were already washed and dried in a very staticky fashion. So I haven't worked on your ideas yet, but thank you for them. So let's overlap something up here. Maybe we'll do one overlap just to make it consistent on both sides. We'll do one here that overlaps a little bit. Tom, you're playing Christmas songs. I love it. Sometimes I just have to stop and just listen to Tom's guitar. Somebody told me that the coolest thing about the lives is when I stopped talking, I was like, hey, <laughs> and they said, and then you hear that music coming in from the background. It's so nice. And I was like, all right, I'll accept that. So now it's more like a blizzard. I wonder if this these 
corners are going to be affected. I bet they are. Let's do just some little corner thing right here. Like a little corner thing right there. And another one on this side. Okay. worried about up there because that's all going to get cut off. Okay, now we're going to cut this out using the Master Layouts 10 die set to get that nice fun little edge. I'm still going to emboss this mess down here, but it's going to get all cut off, but I don't want it to get all in my machine. I really just wanted a couple little snowflake legs coming in on the corners there. Okay, we are not done with the embossing. We are done with it for now. What die cut set am I planning on using? I'm going to use Master Layouts 10. Get my die cutting machine here. And then I am going to use a little bit of washi tape. And I've got my new Spellbinders Universal System. So I have A and B and C. And then I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to place my die. I'm using the stitched one first. Okay, let's find my washi tape. Here it is in front of me. And we're going to go within those lines that we set up. It'll look much nicer once we cut it out. <laughs> Welcome, your first time tonight, Jeanette. Welcome. It's great to see you. Great to see everybody here. I thought I saw somebody say hi to Kathy Zilski. So Kathy must be here. Hi, Kathy Z. If you're here. All right, now I'm going to cut this out. Now, it is easier if you go in on an angle. out doing his thing and you're left alone okay so now I've got this pretty panel here that I think is so nice and we're gonna cut out another piece of cardstock while I have the machine here not with this die but with the coordinating one it's the plain one and I'm gonna use I know I always use black I'm not using black I'm gonna use our gold cardstock this is our metallic gold cardstock we know that you guys grabbed a lot of this during our sale. So I'm going to cut a piece out using Master Layouts 10. Probably should be flipping this plate around. Now, again, if you, you see me struggling a little bit. If you take this die and you angle it like this, it's going to go through the machine faster. I just worry about with a die this big going off the plate, but I think we're okay. So we'll try it. We'll see. I think it'll work. Ooh, let me move this up though. It's gotta be on the platform too. And then with these two platforms, I know some people tape the, um, the two white platforms together. No, I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I am. Ooh, there we go. See, it's going through much easier just by turning it on an angle a little bit. Okie dokie. So now we have this piece and we're going to mount these two pieces together. So I gotta get some tape and we'll do that and then we'll put this aside. Welcome friends. All right, so who can give me the sandwich for embossing? Anybody know the sandwich for embossing? I'm gonna try it by using the information on the plate. Because I want to cut, I want to cut this out in white, but then I want to emboss it with some Swiss dots. So let's see how that works. So I'll cut it first. 
And then I'm going to use the information on the plate itself and see what happens. We can try this together. Let's see how it works. Alrighty, so what it says to do is it says for embossing a cut shape. How to emboss a cut shape. Hmm. Adapter plate D. Let's find adapter plate D. There's my bag of plates. If I'm doing this wrong, tell me. Here's adapter plate D. And then embossing mat. No, that's not what we want to do. We want, that's not what we want to do. This is what we want to do. Okay. We want to use an embossing folder. So we're going to use how to build a standard embossing folder sandwich. Plate A, plate B, embossing folder, and one cutting plate. All right. So let's get an embossing folder into the mix. I think the Swiss dot is the one I want to use. Now, because I have a right side and a wrong side of this cut piece with the stitching, I have to make sure that my embossing folder is going the right way. So I want the nubby part to be on the bottom and the smoother feeling part to be on the top. And then I'm gonna line that up. This looks pretty good. that in there. And now we're going to try it and see. So wish me luck. Okay, that's going through way too easily. So you know me, I like a stronger emboss. So I'm going to just put this folded card on top. I like it to press a little bit more. I still feel like that's too mild. I might add another piece. So, you know, if, if this is you, if you're like me, and you don't feel comfortable unless you it's like really kind of squeezing through. Just add some shims, add your own shims. So let me find one more piece of cardstock. Here we go. I'll just put this right on top. Just one more piece. I just want the impression to be deep. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of exactly like I was doing with my other machine, uh, my other plates. Ooh, look at that. That's gorgeous. How nice and bold that is. Good dotage on there. I like that. All right, so that worked. You might have to watch the replay to figure out what I did. I know I will <laughs> watch the replay to figure out what I did. And now I'm going to use another gold piece of cardstock, and I'm going to do a little gold um, plain one. So I'm going to angle that a little bit. I'm going to do all this die cutting first, and then we will get to some stamping. Dottage. <laughs> that is that could be the word of the day. Although Tom, do you have a <laughs> do you have the word of the day? <laughs> they like dottage. Yeah, that works. Dottage. <laughs> no, I want to hear your word of the day. But there is dotage. There we go. Now you can see with this, this is going to go right across the center of this, and it's like the perfect size. So when I get this all laid out right, you're going to see how pretty that is. And then we're going to cut one of these. I'm going to find the other one. One of these in white and one in gold, okay? But I am going to actually cut these a little later because I'm going to cut these after I stamp my greeting. All right, now let's layer this all up together, adhere everything, and then we'll make our card base, and then we'll get going on the focal part of this card. Okay. So, Tom. Yes. <laughs> what about your word of the day? Okay, there's a word I've heard before. You've heard it before? A word of the day, yes. It's, <laughs> that would be good. So... A heard word? Yeah, so if if you're in a car driving and you there's a passenger and the passenger falls asleep, as soon as the car starts moving, they would have car calepsy. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. I have that. 
How many miles have you driven in silence in the dead space? Oh, you start the car and she's out. I am. I Airplanes too. Sorry, I'm having trouble with this. Airplanes too. I do the same thing. I absolutely fall right to sleep as soon as the, the plane starts. I am out. I used to be kind of nervous flying in a plane and... I realized if you just fall asleep, it's not a big deal. Okay, so there we go. Now I am going to put this onto a card base. So I am using a white card base. Now the right size card base, let's back out just a little bit. The right size card base for this is going to be eight by nine. So I need to get my ton of paper cutter here. So this is the eight side. This is the nine side. So we're going to turn it on the eight side and then we're going to score it from there. Now I don't have a big score buddy right here, a big score tool right here. So you can do it with a score buddy too. You're just going to score this at the four inch mark and just score halfway down and then just flip your paper and do the same thing on the other side at the four inch mark. And that gives you your slimline card base. Now these are huge cards, but the nice thing about these is they don't require any additional postage because they fit in a regular number 10 business envelope. So you get mail this size all the time in the mail, right? It fits perfectly on that size and envelope. And then this is going to go on top, right here in the middle, like that. Okay. Oh, you fall asleep on a Sunday drive? Oh, that's funny. I know my layering isn't great right now, but I can't, I don't have great eyesight. And maybe that's one of the reasons why I use so much black cardstock because it's very easy for me to see the layers when it's stark black against stark white. So excuse my layering not being perfect. I tried <laughs> my best. <laughs> so whoever wins this card tonight will have to put up with a little bit of wonky layering. I'm going to just fix this right there. Okay. Alrighty, so now I'm going to layer these two pieces together. I really do struggle with the metallic and it's not, I don't really in like real life, um, but when I'm on set I do because I've got four big light boxes blaring right at me straight on and they do create a glare that makes it hard for me to see what I'm doing. So it's actually a little bit difficult to see. So I'm not sure where I want to put this yet. I think I'm probably going to put it up a little higher because I'm going to do a flower down here. So let's get working on the flower. All right, so I'm going to get my Misty stamping tool and I'm going to use this star flower as a poinsettia tonight. And I'm going to make the poinsettia red. I have embossing powder everywhere. Oh my word, everywhere. Let me get a Swiffer. I need the dust. You just clean the dust up here <laughs> with the Swiffer. There we go. That'll make it easier. Okay. So I'm going to use this big flower. And I'm going to stamp that in red hot ink. So I want to make sure that that is right up in that corner of the Misty. Is this too far away? Can you guys see me okay? I know some of you uh, watch on a big screen. So right now this Misty is about the size of a hallway door. But I hope that this is okay if you're watching on your phone, if you can still see. I'm using Red Hot. I like Red Hot or Red Velvet or Wild Cherry for Christmas stamps. So I'm going to stamp this to one layer. And then I'm going to stamp it a second time. Ooh, that is so pretty. Isn't that just a pretty funky flower? You like it a little closer? All right, let's move it a little closer. How's that? Good? 
That should be good. Okay. And now we're going to give it a second coat. And I actually might do two flowers, so we'll see. Oh, nice and vibrant. Okay, I'm going to do a second flower here. I'm going to use the same piece of cardstock. Just going to cut this off. So this way I can put it in like this. And I don't have to move the misty. All right, we'll make two just in case we want to use two. Might as well make them now than trying to, you know, later go, oh, I wish I had two. And if I don't need them both, then I can just make two cards. That has a little mess up there, but that's all right. Welcome everyone. I see lots of you here. We've got close to 2,500 people here tonight. It's so nice to see you all. We've got, we're streaming on three different platforms at once. It's kind of crazy and we can see where you're coming from. Yeah, I really like those flowers. Okay. So I'd love to add a little gold onto these flowers. So I'm going to do that. Let me get, uh, let's do a couple leaves though. So let me get a piece of cardstock here. I'm just going to trim this off. We'll start up here. Clean that flower. Now I'm going to grab the leaf design. This is a real easy stamp to stamp as well. I mean, you can make it just vibrant like that, or you can do the layers. So let's go, let's see, what if we go here? Let me stamp this. Let's use grass green tonight. coats to get it nice and solid and then let's just move this down a little bit and we'll put some washi tape on it so that it doesn't move so that we can get a second stamping in there this way we don't have to get too inky want to do our so I'm going to do move down again a little bit I think we should still be okay oh I didn't need to move down that much so I want to do like four leaves too close I probably should have counted the boxes but that'll be fine okay And we'll do one more leaf. And you can see as this color starts to dry, it's lightening up just a little bit. That's because our ink has a smoothing agent in it. So when it starts out, it's one color. And then as the ink starts to dry, it's kind of like latex paint. If you've ever painted a, uh, a wall and you look at it and it just, ugh, looks a little blotchy and you leave and then you come back and it looks perfect. It's all smooth. And you're thinking, well, what happened? It was blotchy a little while ago. That's because um, latex dries really fast, but not all exactly the same. So as it's drying, it lightens up a little bit and it looks blotchy. So that's what happens here too. So I want to really dry these. The next Gina K discount day, <laughs> that will probably be Black Friday. We don't do very many discounts, but we always do something on Black Friday. So I want to dry these as well as I can. Dottage is a word? I didn't know that. 
Thank you for telling me that. I had no idea dottage was a word. Okay, so I think these are probably a little drier. Let me start here. This was my first one. I think it's pretty dry. I'm hoping. Okay, so now I'm going to add that second layer onto this stamp. So I'm just going to line up the center. I'm going to get my head in the way, and I have to get my roots done, so don't look too close. But I'm just lining up the center there the best that I can. Oh, and then I pushed it out of the way. I'm trying to not get my roots in. Um, yeah, I got an appointment with Rena Kay. She's going to do my hair soon. Okay, here we go. All right. So I'm going to use the embossing magic here. I'm going to do it over here too. Okay. And then I'm going to use some of this embossing and watermark ink. Now you can do this too soon. Even though it's dye ink and it's fast drying, it could stick to part of that. So I'm really hoping that, you know, we gave it enough time to dry. But I only have an hour, so, you know, I got to do the best I can. Okay. Oh, that's cool. That's cool just like that. I don't know if you could see that. Can they see that, Tom? That leaves a watermark behind and just darkens up. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Okay. What did I do with my embossing thing? My little piece of cardstock. I'll get a different piece of cardstock. I can find one. For crying out loud. We'll just use this for now. Now I'll find it. All right, wish me luck. Ooh, I'm nervous. Ooh, that looks good. I love having a little bit of gold on here. All right, let's let's cook this. <laughs> oh, look at that. Isn't that so pretty? Look at that. I love that. Okay. So we'll leave that. Did I emboss it all? Again, I can't see. Yeah, it's close enough. All right, now I'll put this up here. And then I will clean this again. Oh, I should move this. That will be my next disaster. <laughs> Do the same thing again, getting my roots in the way. There we go. Wish me luck now, because this was a little sticky. So who knows what'll happen. But if it's too sticky, we'll just go with one flower. That was kind of the plan to begin with. All right. It's gonna be close enough. I really like this stamp set. Pretty good, not bad. Now you can see where my issues are. I like to clean it up now rather than have to sand it off later. Side again. I'm not very close to my Misty, even if it looks like I am. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that fun? 
Okay, we'll put that aside. Now these I'm gonna just hand stamp. So I'm just gonna add this little detail. Let's go ahead and give that the embossing magic. This just gives me a little detail. These are not perfect, but they're going to be very pretty. Okay. And we will emboss those with gold as well. There's a lot of fun gold embossing going on here. That's going to get stuck in the washi. Okay. Good enough. We're only going to have to emboss one more thing, and that's the greeting. Because we can't go with the um, a black greeting on this card. I just feel like it all has to, to match. There we go. Those are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> Yes, that's why it's called art. <laughs> and my signature is on there too because my signature fingerprints are all throughout. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and emboss a piece of white cardstock. I have a one piece I'm just gonna tear and put right in here. I don't care. And then I'm gonna use the Merry Christmas greeting from Holly Jolly. And remember, we got to give it enough room to be able to cut it out. So don't have it too high up. Okay. This looks good. Let's use the embossing magic on here. Now, we could do two coats of embossing and watermark ink. If you want, when you're using the Misty, you can double coat it just to make sure there's no little shallow areas. And with the greeting, sometimes I like to do that. This is a very well-loved stamp. As you can see, it's all yellowed from being stained, from stamping it with so many colors. Okay. Now, my final coat of embossing, and then we can cut everything out and assemble this card. That won't take long. I'm just going to take my time right here. What was your word of the day again, Tom? Carcolepsy. Carcolepsy. <laughs> Love it. Tom's been on a roll with his words of the day. He's had quite a few good ones lately. Carol Lee wants to know, will there be a new release before the end of the month? Yes, we have a new release coming up on July 26th. There is not a kit in this release. This is a smaller release because we just had that big sale. But then in August, we do have a brand new kit coming along with lots of autumn stamp sets. Okay, there's my greeting. Oh, that is pretty, isn't it? I love this font too. Okay, so let's cut it all out and put it all together. So we will start with, I gotta move some of this stuff. I was actually thinking of red and green and not doing the embossing. So I have so much stuff out here. Like I have two different greens and, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut this. And what's nice about this is it is a very scripty font. So if it's not perfectly straight up and down, don't worry about it. But we just want to make sure that it doesn't shift. 
for using these jumbo plates. And then we're going to cut a gold one of these. This is the one with the stitching to match all of the other stitching. Then we're going to cut a gold one out of this piece of gold. And we're going to use the plain die. That's what I love about these master layouts is that even the shapes, the fancy shapes like these, have the shadow layer piece. So you can just layer everything. I know, I know, Brianna. It is really early. I feel the same way. I like to take seasons one at a time. I get really, I don't know, a little annoyed when I go to the store and, you know, it's the end of June and they already have back to school or they have all the Halloween stuff out. I get a little annoyed with that because um, I do like to take the seasons one at a time. But then at the same time, I have customers that, you know, that are already saying to me, what do you mean autumn? We want Christmas. So they want Christmas stamps already. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm trying my best to please everybody. And I'm going to cut these out. I think, is there a way? There might be a way. I think that's the way. Should I just wing it? I'm going to wing it. Whew. Okay. No tape. Scary. Costco has Halloween stuff out already? Now, seriously, if they have Halloween candy, how fresh is that candy going to be months from now? All right, so that's pretty good. Pretty close. Let's cut this other one out in case we need it. This is pretty symmetrical, this design. Way to go, Alicia. She made my night, making it easy to cut. <laughs> Ooh, that's crunchy on the side. It's sticking out. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Hobby Lobby does not have Christmas trees. Seriously? Already? It's too soon. Look at that sparkle, or shine, anyway. All right, now we're going to cut those leaves quickly, and then we will throw this card together. Oh, I gotta cut this four times. Yes. One. <laughs> oh yes, I will I will post a picture of her wall of art, her mural. It's beautiful. I sit out there sometimes when I take business calls and it's so zen because it's got the big lotus flower from her um, lovely lotus stamp set right in the middle of everything. So yeah, I will post a picture of her mural, definitely. Cutting these out quickly and unevenly. <laughs> it's a technique. I wonder how many people would watch that YouTube video if I titled it Quick and Uneven Die Cutting. <laughs> people would be like, I don't need to watch a video for that. That's an easy, easy technique to do. Quick and uneven die cutting. It's all right. They're not too bad. They could be a lot worse. I know people like to, to make Christmas early. But honestly, if you are new to Gina K Designs, we have such an extensive Christmas line in our collection that if you like to get started early, you could pick something up from last year or the year before and make some beautiful holiday cards. And then you could save some of your projects to the very, you know, to September. I don't think September, late September is a bad time to to do Christmas release, and then you'll have, you know, so much time. Okay, before I put this down, I wanna, I wanna tape these two together. It's better than horrible, yes, thank you. That's my goal, it's my bar. All right, so this is just going to be, put a little more tape there, but the flowers will, Cover it. So this is just going to be a little accent piece for that. So let's get this in the middle, but a little high middle. Eh, 
now we'll put it right in the middle. So I think I'm going to use all the flowers. So I'll put that in the middle. I am going to back up just a little bit because half of the card is <laughs> cut off because it is a, a slim line. So hopefully all of that. Is all of that in the picture, Tom? Yes. Okay. So I'll put this here right in the middle. I actually want that to be more centered because I'm going to do a flower on the top and a flower on the bottom. All right, I'm going to get some foam squares. I only have black ones left. That's all right, you're not going to see them. And I'm going to do one flower here and one flower down here. And I'm going to add these little leaves in here. And have these coming in this way. Like that. And then we'll add some little crystals in the center. So we'll put the leaves down first and we'll just tape those right to the card. Yeah, it's a very different, very modern, lots of embossing and fun card. And then we'll add that with a foam square. I'm all out of my white ones. I might do it double, get it up a little higher. can double these up if you want and this way it's going to be up nice and high because I've got a lot of layers in here there we go I like that okay this this one cut out is better than horrible but that's about it <laughs> it's not great <laughs> Definitely better than horrible. We'll, I want to make sure I might move these, move these over this way a little bit. We don't want to cover up the Merry Christmas. And again, we'll double up foam squares. Maybe I'll just do some jumbo sequins, if I have any jumbos. There we go. I really wanted to use these. These are so pretty. Look at the shine. These are the frozen rhinestones. And I wanted to do a couple in the center. So maybe I'll do that. Why not? Why not? I'll just do a little triangle of three in here. And same down here. We'll see how hard these are to put on. I used connect glue for that. And I think I'll use these big ones. I think it'll easily fit three big ones. They like to stick. get my craft pick in the mix. I like these. These are really sparkly. I know it's kind of hard to tell because we have these lights that reduce glare, although they're not really helping my vision. But can you see that sparkle in there? Does that show, Tom? It does. Oh, good. I love these. In uh, regular like house lighting, they look like diamonds. They're so shiny and sparkly. All right, so no black on this card. So when I post it, nobody's gonna know it's a Gina K card. It'll probably affect the whole algorithm on Instagram because there's no black. <laughs> All right, so there's my finished card. Lots of sparkle and shine. 
something a little bit different, fun layout, huge card. This card would have made my mom so happy because she equated the size of the card with the amount of love. So a slimline card she would have loved because it feels nice and big compared to an A2 or a mini slimline. But I love that. So pretty and so much. Yes, the stamp set does come with centers. So it comes with two kinds of centers. It comes with, let me get a piece of white cardstock here just to show you. This is the wrong thing, but it's got a big center that you can put in the center. And it's also got these little dots. So it's like a cluster. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit and you can see that. It's got like a cluster of little dots here. It's also got extra dots to accent the tips of all the petals. So there's lots of fun things you can do. And then it's got winter wishes if you want to make a winter card. It's also got happy birthday to you and love you. And it's got two different ways to decorate these leaves. So you could put one on one end, one on the other, or you can layer them like this one on top of that one and that on top of that one to add three greens. So it's really fun. But yeah, I decided to go with the uh, sparkly center instead. And the name of that set again? It is called Starflower and it is on sale right now in our deal of the week category. You can get both the stamp set and the die set for only 15 bucks. So that's a pretty good deal. All right, Tom, we need to pick a winner. All righty. I'm just going to keep doing that because look at that. I got to keep doing <laughs> All right. Choose okay. a drum roll. All right. Draw. My mess. The winner tonight of that beautiful card is Marcy Morgan. Marcy Yay, Morgan. Marcy. Congratulations, Marcy. You are the winner, Marcy. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I will send you this shiny slimline card. All right, everybody. Well, we want to thank you all so much for being with us tonight. As I told you last week, um, we're not going to be here on Thursday this week because I have two doctor's appointments. Nothing's wrong. They're just annual appointments. You guys know I'm a diabetic. Got to get my dilated eye exam. I would be no good making a video with a dilated eye exam because I can't see anything for like six hours after that. Um, and I also am getting my annual wrist checkup to make sure my wrists are healing from my surgery that I had a year ago. So I got both of those appointments and I scheduled them a year in advance. So I can't really change them. It was back when we were doing Wednesdays and not Thursdays, but I will be back with another five minute card video this weekend. So in the meantime, everybody, you stay safe and healthy and Tom and I love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.